supplement quality matters. Don't make these mistakes when buying your next supplement. What's up, guys? Hey, we're at three. Now where are we? Hey guys, Dr. Robert Fredrickson here. Today we're going to talk about how to find a good quality brand in the supplement industry. There, the supplement industry as a whole is a huge industry. In 2016, it was estimated to be over 100 billion. So there are products left and right. A lot of people look really pretty. A lot of the products look really pretty, make you want to entice you to buy them. Well, buyer beware, not all supplements are created equal, and especially in the retail channel. For an example, in 2015, the New York Attorney General set out to pull off random products from the shelf to do DNA barco barcode testing. They just wanted to see if what they claimed on the bottle was actually in there when they did DNA testing. So they pulled off 78 different bottles and what they found was really, really misleading, really alarming. Um, some that were claiming turmeric had fiber or potatoes or kidney beans. Um, a lot of these products had just misleading um, label claim. Some even had some detrimental, uh, harmful chemicals in these products. So it was a total crapshoot. And the four re retailers they went to, you probably know them already, GNC, Target, Walgreens, and CVS. And so obviously all of these companies got reprimanded and all these companies got in trouble. But still, do you really want to be trusting a company that's going to put anything on a label just to make a quick buck? And the other problem with a lot of these companies is they're all middleman companies. And what I mean by, by this, what I mean by that is this, is that a lot of these companies are private labeling from other companies. They're not really doing the testing. They're saying it's a good product. They're slapping labels on it. So a lot of these raw materials are coming from China, which is notorious for producing a mass quantity product that is um, poor quality. So you really get what you pay for, and that's especially true in the supplement industry. So another study by JAMA looked at um, potency on the label of vitamin D products. They pulled out 15 different products of vitamin D, same lot number, um, same brand, different brands, and they just wanted to see if what they had for potency, like 5,000 IUs, was actually uh, clinically tested on that label. And guess what? Half of them didn't even meet it. Um, I actually wanted, I think it was a, only a four, four or six bottles actually met label claim, but the other ones are a total crapshoot. Some are only 9% potent, or some are up to 157% over. So you aren't getting a narrow window. So how do you find a good quality supplement? Well, first thing is to look for USP. USP stands for United States Pharmacopoeia. They define a mineral or a vitamin, and they actually will identify that monograph to actually say, hey, if you're claiming this is magnesium, it's magnesium. And the potency of magnesium on the label has to be within a, either 90% or 110%. It's going to be a very, very small near window, similar to the pharmaceutical industry. Another thing you would look for is um, third-party testing. You'll look for companies that are actually vetting these raw materials when they come in-house. They're also doing third-party analysis from an unbiased lab that is not them to actually verify their minerals, verify their potency, etc. You also want to look for certified GMP, which stands for Certified Good Manufacturing Practices. This is going to ensure that your, 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 pro, your product that you're ingesting is going through a vetted, clean, sanitary process that is not going to have any contaminants, any residues, and you're actually going to get what it says on that label. One thing I want to point out for USP is this. USP is great for identifying uh, you know, purity and, and making sure, not, not purity, for making sure that your product actually has what it says it, is, says it does, but you've got to be a smart consumer. You've got to read the back of your label. For example, if a product says calcium and it's USP, look on the back. What form is that calcium? If it's calcium carbonate, you are ingesting drywall. Not really, but that's actually what they make drywall of is calcium carbonate. So if they pour rock salt, that's not really going to get absorbed. It's more for buffering, um, you know, acidity and that sort of thing, but it's not going to actually help you get absorption to the bone. So for calcium, I like calcium chelate, like a raw material from Albion Labs called Dimacal. But the same goes for magnesium. Is it magnesium and magnesium oxide? 
very, very poor bioavailability, only 4% bioavailable. So 100 milligrams of magnesium in the mag oxide form, you're only gonna get four milligrams, not a lot. Look for chelated versions. I like Albium Labs because they're one of the um, one of the leaders in chelated minerals like magnesium malate, magnesium glycinate, um, calcium, you know, calcium chelates, potassium chelates, selenium glycinate, zinc glycinate, etc. So they actually make sure that the minerals you're ingesting that are hard to digest anyways and get eaten away by a stomach acid actually have a chance to get absorbed through passive diffusion and go into the cells where they can actually have a function, okay? Um, another thing for quality supplements is you want to you want to make sure that the, the company has the right values. Um, the companies, usually you should look for trademarked ingredients. Usually these are the raw materials that actually have all the studies behind them. Usually they have a little TM behind it. But you got to ask the manufacturer, hey, what, is, what does Sportagel mean? Sportagel is actually a, a, is a type 2 collagen, for example. And it's got 16 you know, human clinical trials behind this product. So very, very evidence-based. And these are the types of trademark ingredients that are usually found in more professional-grade brands. Not to knock off all retail brands, I'm sure there's some good ones out there, but when you're going for a professional supplement brand like Orthomolecular Products, Pure Encapsulations, Thorn, um, whatever, Zymogen, you know that these companies have um, the doctor's reputation on the line and they're not going to let that doctor's patients down. So usually you're going to have trademark raw materials that are evidence-based. But again, be a smart consumer. I I've been reading labels since I was 16 and uh, you know I've gotten really... Uh, really wary of people that do proprietary blends, which basically have a plethora of stuff they're not actually telling you the, the amounts that in there. I call that the uh, the spray and pray approach. You're, you're basically, if you're selling the company, you're saying, hey, we got it in there somewhere, we're not gonna tell you how much though. And we all know that certain supplements need to be in certain, dosage, certain dosages to actually have a clinical effect. So hopefully you found this video over uh, supplement quality important and helpful. If you did, I would be honored if you subscribed to my YouTube channel, Dr. Robert Fredrickson. I'd be honored if you shared it with a friend. I'd be uh, honored if you, you know, sent a Facebook message to somebody with this video. Because I want everyone to be a smart consumer. The most expensive supplement is the one that doesn't work. I'm Dr. Robert Fredrickson again. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you in the next video.